Welcome back to Gaming Assembled. Today is a CK3 Game of Thrones Spotlight episode on the Mountain Clans of the Vale. Thank you for joining us. Before we start, we'd love to hear from you. So like, comment and subscribe to the channel and interact with us on social media. And thank you to Jacob Moit and Welshie for subscribing already. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 3. Welcome back to Westeros. This is another of my Region Spotlight special episodes. Uh, in this episode, we are looking at the Mountain Clansmen of the Vale. Now, these are a very different style of playthrough to what you'll have played in, well, basically anywhere else south of the wall, I suppose, in, uh, in the game. Um, the idea is, is that they, well, they are very different. They're a people apart, in a sense. They they are a, a bit of a I suppose a step back in time really for you know when you when you consider them in the wider scheme of what's going on. Um, they live in this very sort of cut off area of the map, high up in the mountains um, within the Vale. And I mean, first off, if we look at the map, the, the developers have done a great job at sort of representing that. It's sort of very steep, very craggy, very cut off from the world. I mean, I love some of the, the effects in there. I mean, there's this, you know, the, the lake and things high up in the mountains. Really, really nice. Um, obviously, we're dealing with a clan level, uh, clan type of, of, of holdings and things like that. It's a... A very different sort of campaign. Obviously, we're dealing with uh, clan type holdings, uh, so there's no castles up here, and the people that are there are very much, uh, as I say, very much reminiscent of the wildlings of North of the Wall. Now, the story goes that when the Andals first invaded Westeros from Essos, the first men who were living in the Vale. Some bent the knee and intermarried uh, with the Andal invaders. Some refused to surrender and refused to comply and to integrate and things, and they retreated up into the mountains. And it's these people who are the ancestors of uh, the clansmen. Now, the culture obviously is derived from the first men. Uh, which I suppose gives you some, um, in a way, some sort of uh, kinship with the people of the north and obviously people beyond the wall um, who I suppose consider themselves northerners more than anything. Um, in terms of the traits that you're dealing with, obviously mountaineers is a given. You know, they live in the mountains. This is where they are. They, you know, in terms of the game and the, uh, the mechanics of the game, they're going to have advantages, as you can see there, in terms of supply limits and levy size and things like that. It's, it's The commander's traits and things are going to be more focused on uh, mounting warfare, which I suppose, you know, in terms of it's not just going to help you in this area of the Vale. There's going to be other areas of the Vale though, where that's going to be useful as well. And so, you know, there are things like that. And the culture that you're dealing with uh, is obviously it's a, a strong warrior culture the, the focus is is on that it's on martial pursuits um i suppose in a way it's very similar to a viking playthrough in the sort of the base game of crusader kings 3 really it's all about warriors it's all about fighting uh there's a strong sense of of heritage of where they come from you know the traditions that they've got and things like that um you know there's there's lots of things for, like that that are um, that come through uh, in terms of who they are as a people. And so you can really use that, I suppose, in terms of uh, the role play of a, of a campaign, um, looking at, I suppose, primarily raiding and things like that to start with, uh, trying to sort of build up your, your power, your, um, your, your lands and things. There are two general chunks of, of lands, um, now this is a bit more of a gamey thing, I think, rather than probably from the books and things, but there is obviously a high, 
High Lordship of the Southern Clans. There's two general sort of categories of them, two little groupings of them. There's the Northern Clans and the Southern Clans. And so there's two High Lordships. And this is more reflective of the fact that the, um, um, you know, the, the Crusader Kings 3 as a game has these different tiers of, of, of holdings, doesn't it? Obviously, it has counties and duchies and kingdoms and, and then obviously empires. And so it's trying to bring that into it, really. Um, I mean, essentially, you've got the two duchy level titles. You've got a kingdom, kingdom of the moon clans. Um, you can even, if you so wish, change that to an empire level title as well, which is still called the kingdom of the moon clans, but it's an empire level title. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure that would give you a great deal, you know, other than a lot of prestige, perhaps, you know, from having that, but, you know, it's, there you go, it's what it is, it's there. Um, I'm not sure, as I say, it's based on anything other than the mechanics of the game. There needs to be these different tiers in order for it to function. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, in terms of a role play, I think, you know, yes, obviously you can be, you know, you can become the, the premier sort of chieftain of, of these holdings. But ultimately, I think your goal has got to be to try and take back the veil. You know, that's who your people were, you know, they were the rulers of, you know, the inhabitants of the Vale, and they were pushed out and displaced. And so regaining that territory, trying to take back um, their ancestral home, I suppose, is probably really what you would do in terms of a, that would ultimately, I think, be your goal. You know, I don't think as a clan chief, you really care who sits on the Iron Throne down here. This isn't anything to do with you. You know, you are above all this. I mean, you are... The, these clans are completely independent of the Seven Kingdoms. You're not involved in any of that. The politics do not interest you whatsoever. You couldn't care less who is sleeping with who and whose sister's doing who and all this sort of stuff. It's nothing to do with you. You are purely interested in taking their gold, taking their weapons, strengthening you so that you can try, ultimately, I suppose, to take back your homeland. And that's what you, I suppose, from a roleplay perspective, would be about. Um, you have some nice um, men-at-arms regiment troops uh, at your disposal to help with that. Obviously, you've got the standard ones and things like that. Obviously, your pikemen and things, which obviously will be good in the mountains. You do have the stolen spears as well, which are... Um, well, slightly worse in some senses than your standard pikemen, but I think again that reflects who who they are. I mean, there's no difference in price. They're slightly less tough than um, than the standard uh, pikemen unit. Um, but I think, as I say, it, it it tells you a little bit of something about them, really. I mean, the I mean the description there, though more primitively equipped than lowlander soldiers, spearmen of the mountain clans delight in skewering the horses of their hated Andal foes. It tells you that and the clan champions here, look, obviously are heavy infantry, quarrelsome by nature, the mountain clans of the north, capable of fielding formidable regiments of seasoned fighters. It tells you that for them it's not about politics. It's not about, as I say, kings and lords and things like this. It's personal. It's vengeance. It's, as I say, taking back your homeland. And so that is certainly something that, you know, is worth considering in terms of, you know, your your playthrough, your game uh, moving forward. It's something that, you know, you could integrate into the narrative that you, you create. And so that is, it adds a new dynamic, I think. And just the fact that you can go off raiding. You know, you can try and um, bleed some of your enemies a little bit to try and give you the resources you need to um, establish yourself as the the first amongst equals. Because that's another aspect to them. They are a bit more egalitarian, you know, in terms of their viewpoint. Um, you know, the idea of women being in the fight, you know, in, in, the, um, in the raiders and things. Again, there's this premise for that in the law and the the canon um you know they uh, again it, it very much reminds you of sort of scandinavian sort of approaches to things in uh, in the base game really the idea of women warriors and things um uh, you know anyone who's watched i know the 
TV series Vikings isn't exactly historically accurate, but there are women warriors in that, and you you know it's something that you'll see you know in throughout um, you know sort of historical you know some slightly more uh, accurate historical depictions of of things that happened in that time and with those people. Women warriors wasn't unknown, and so that's what you get here as well in that sense. Although the game doesn't necessarily show you that. Um, the idea of a bit more of an egalitarian approach to things is certainly something that's there. But it also tells you a little bit about something how these guys are a little bit more, you know, primitive in that sense. The idea of human sacrifice being in there. Um, it's obviously we're looking at a, an unreformed, it's a version of the old God's faith, you know, so you've got the God's woods and things like that. The, the nature focus of things. Uh, but as I say, it's a little bit, it's taken a bit of a turn towards the dark side uh, in that sense. And there's a little bit going on there that um, is, well, certainly by the standards of those in the realms surrounding them, would probably be a little bit backward and, and downright wrong, really. Um, and so, um, you know, that is uh, something to consider uh, in terms of, again, the focus and the the motivations of characters why would they you know what how would they respond to captured prisoners for example they might they might do human sacrifice you know they 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 might sacrifice them to their gods you know it's it's not something that they would necessarily you know guarantee that they would ransom them for example you know so they they might do that um in terms of holy sites there are some that are relatively nearby you know some that are in in the veil there are some that are slightly further away but um you could look at trying to reform the faith and try to uh, go down that route uh obviously you'd need to probably try and establish yourself a little bit more firmly because obviously going up against uh the veil uh, as it is is just that would just be suicide um so you'd need to try and do some work and maybe try and head towards feudalism or something like that yourself, maybe first. Um, it's difficult to to sort of say for definite what the the way forward would be. There aren't any particular decisions uh, other than obviously things like well, it says it says adopt clan ways. I mean, I would have thought that would should say feudal ways, but um, I don't know. Or maybe adapt clan ways if you're going for that that way of writing but anyway i don't know but the point is is that there aren't any particular decisions uh for them as a people as a culture that would be nice really as an add-in you know something that got added in further you know going forward something to add a bit more of a not quite a quest line but something that they could aim for and achieve and you know something like that um you know something to work towards as you go through your campaign maybe as you go through maybe some things unlock i don't know but um, maybe there's certain achievements when you get to, say, duchy level, it unlocks a decision or something. I don't know. Um, but um, it, it would certainly be um, an interesting thing to consider. I think that's a little bit daft. Um, request a loan from the Iron Bank of Bravos. I can't really see this guy who's living in a hut in the middle of the mountains, um, you know, raiding his neighbours, sending off a... A delegation to a bank, you know, in in Essos, that that doesn't seem realistic to me. So I'm not quite sure that should be there. Um, but uh, you know, maybe that's something that would unlock again if you went feudal. But um, you know, and again, by knighthood, you know, I don't think they'd care about the idea of knighthood. It's not important to them. They're not. That's not who they are. So I think there are bits that could do with being tweaked and things like that. I don't know what their sort of uh, their throne room would be, their royal court and things like that. Um, I know when I did the uh, spotlight on the Fen, uh, it was very much just the standard um, royal court. Um, so maybe that would be the case here too, I don't know. But, I mean, we're still only in the beta for um, this mod, so, you know, maybe it's something they'll add in as we go forward and change as we go forward, uh, if that is the case. Maybe, as I say, other events and things are things they could put in uh, to really flesh out a playthrough in this area. Because, as I say, it would be a really interesting, a very different playthrough. Just the idea of being completely separate to everything else that's going on. 
um, would in some ways be quite a refreshing change. Um, being able to try and take advantage of the chaos and the turmoil um, in that way. So certainly interesting. Um, but I mean, if you have played, you know, a campaign with these guys, then obviously do let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you had a particular strategy or tactic or you know way of working that uh, you thought was uh, was good or successful. If there's a particular role play angle that you'd go for that I've not mentioned or things, again, by all means mention it. Chat about it in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful. And as ever, I will see you in the next one. Take care.